Hello, my name is Benedikt Mark and I am a research assistant at the Smart Mini Factory of the Free University of Bozen. Today I am going to present you the paper with the title Function-Based Mapping of Industrial Assistance Systems to User Groups in Production. First of all, regarding the agenda. I am going to start with a short introduction, then I speak about the theoretical background state-of-the-art of industrial assistance systems, user groups for assistance systems, and finally the research question. Afterwards, the research methodology will be explained. After gotten introduced to the functional requirements of user groups, a mapping of functional requirements in industrial worker assistance systems will be presented. What follows is a morphological box, an exemplary application, a discussion and a conclusion and outlook. Let's directly jump into the introduction. In this picture, you can see European research projects on the role of human in production. At this point, I want to introduce the term anthropocentric production, which is a production system not only technology oriented, but human centered and the term Operator 4.0, which was defined by Romero in the year 2016, which is an operator of the future, a so-called smart and skilled operator who performs work aided by machines if and as needed. The number of European projects on human-centered production confirms that this topic is currently of high interest in the area of smart manufacturing and industry 4.0. So there is a need of assistance systems in production. In this slide, you can see different industrial assistance systems. They are divided into three groups, sensorial, extend sensing capabilities, physical, extend physical capabilities, and cognitive, extend cognitive capabilities. I don't want to talk about every single one in detail since there are 41 different assistance systems, but let me just pick out three of them, so one out of each group. Eye tracking technology uh, allows to later see where the operator looked at and where there were fixations or saccades and analyze it in the end. So for example, see how the stress level was when you combine it with the GSR technology or just see where he looked at and where he focused at. Out of the physical ones, exoskeleton is a kind of a suit which um, allows the operator to lift heavy weight or also to have the right position in terms of ergonomics. Out of the cognitive group, let me pick out the projection-based assistance systems which allows to have a digital approach, so not anymore the, the traditional one, paper-based, but more a traditional projection-based one that allows to have the instructions directly on the workplace of the worker and allows to have quality checks and other different tools that can be used. After having talked about industrial assistance systems, let's now focus on the user groups for assistance systems. In this table, you can see the different types of user groups we defined. It is divided into three parts, variables, user groups, and description. The variables are age, education, experience, variety of work content, occupational health and safety, handicap presence, and migration. The defined user groups are then elder worker, unskilled worker, unexperienced worker, flexible worker, worker with safety risk, with health risk, physically handicapped worker, mentally handicapped worker, and migrant worker. On the right side, you can see a short description, for example, for elder worker increasing age, which might have an impact on the task performance, for unskilled worker not have the required or recommended skills education and for example for physically handicapped worker physical disability with impact on the task performance. 
The literature review showed that there is no instrument available to identify the most appropriate assistance system for certain user groups. What is missing is the analysis of functional requirements and capabilities of the different user groups in industrial production in order to match it later with existing assistance systems available on the market. Therefore, our research question is, how can assistance systems be selected systematically and based on the functional requirements from the user groups? In order to answer this research question, we follow the research methodology. First of all, we try to identify different user groups. Afterwards, the identification of functional requirements followed. And in the end, we had an analysis of assistance systems and examination of suitability. So a mapping of these user groups with their appropriate assistance systems. In order to receive these functional requirements of user groups, we had interviews with stakeholder associations, companies, as well as employees. The interviews were organized as semi-structured interviews with a total of 11 questions. Later, we were able to define 25 functional requirements to best describe these user groups. Here, you can see these 25 functional requirements. I don't want to go into every single one of them because that would go beyond the scope. But let me just read some of them. So flexibility, logical thinking, ability to see, communication skills, correctness, and so on. What you can see here is a mapping of functional requirements and industrial worker assistance systems. On the y-axis, you can see the 41 assistance systems that I already presented you some slides before. And on the x-axis, you can see the functional parameters. I just want to give you two examples. For example, on the y-axis, exoskeleton affects the functional parameters strength and endurance, movability, ergonomics, physical safe working, physical capacity, and working velocity. Instead, the projection-based assistance system affects ability to hear, learning ability, retentiveness, power of concentration, independence, communication skills, attention, and the end correctness. As an example, I would like to show you this exemplary application. Here we picked out the user group Elder Worker. This group might need support regarding the functional requirements marked in orange, which you can see in the middle. So, strength and endurance, ability to hear, movability, ergonomics, ability to see, learning ability, retentiveness, responsiveness, power of concentration, attention, flexibility, working velocity, and physical health. If you now compare them with the assignment table, you can assign the user groups to the assistance systems that are most likely to help them. We here in this example pick out the functional requirements strength and endurance, and then the assistance system exoskeleton, for example, arm, leg, back support, flexible assembly assist robot, robots in general and automats, telemanipulator, balance lifting aids, variable liftings, and collaborative robots. Let's now come to the discussion. What we did here is a first function-based mapping approach of currently available worker assistance systems and requirements of user groups in industrial production. We identified 25 functional requirements and capabilities in order to get in the end a classification, a mapping of these 25 functional requirements to the user groups. So this is a method 
that allows to find the right assistance system for certain user groups. Nevertheless, we have to admit that this research is in its early stages. So further analysis and discussions with stakeholders and user groups are needed to complete the list of functional requirements. Further need of action is the quantification and the identification of the importance of each functional requirement and to map the suitability of assistance systems to meet the functional requirements. According to us, this is a good contribution to the conference on flexible mass customization, since it is a topic issue that will be even more needed in the coming years due to the increased number of assistance systems and the lack of workers together with the increased complexity of machines. In this approach, different functional requirements are defined to characterize and describe the different needs. The goal here is to match industrial worker assistance systems and the human operator in the most efficient way and therefore also to improve the effective and efficient use of the workforce in production. Based on this, we proposed a function-based methodology for the selection of appropriate worker assistance systems. Now, as a next step in the further improvement and development of this selection methodology, is to quantify the functional needs, as well as the satisfaction of such needs by assistance systems available on the market. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation and thank you for your attention. Please, if you have feedback or input or any questions, send me an email.